All right, I'm gonna show you how to use Descartes' rule of signs. And basically, Descartes' rule for any polynomial is, is two part. You look at the signs of f of x, and you find the number of sign changes in the polynomial, some polynomial f of x. And the number of sign changes of f of x gives you the number of positive roots. So it gives you the number of positive roots. So if there's three sign changes, that means you could have a possibility of three positive roots or, or less than that number by two. So I could have three positive roots or less than that by two is one positive root, okay? If it said the number of sign changes came up to four, then I could have four positive roots, less that by two would be two positive roots, less that by two, zero positive roots. So in this case, I, the situation could be there are no positive roots. In this one, I could have three or one. The situation of no positive roots can't happen here. So that's interesting and sometimes helpful when you're solving things and you use Descartes' rule as a little, little help to narrow down what roots should try. Another thing, part two of Descartes' rule says you look at f of minus x and find the number of sign changes. So first, every place there's an x in the equation, you put a minus x. Then you look at the number of sign changes. Suppose there are five sign changes from plus to minus, minus back to plus. That means there could be five negative roots. All right, so this is for the negative roots. There could be five or less that by two. So there could be five or three or one. Could there be zero negative roots? Not in this situation. Suppose I did sign changes and I came up with the fact that there were two sign changes. That means there could be two negative roots or less that by two is zero negative roots. So that's how you uh, use Descartes' rule. Let me do a real example so you can see what really happens here. All right, so here's, a, here's an example of a function I have right here. And let's look at sign changes. So sign changes for the positive roots. Okay, so positive roots. How many sign changes do I have? I go plus to plus, not a change. Plus to minus, ooh, there's a change. Minus back to plus, there's a change. Plus to plus. So that means there's a possibility of two positive roots or less than that by two, zero positive. All right, let's find the number of sign changes for a negative. So we put in f of minus x. Here we go, minus x to the fifth, plus minus x to the fourth, minus three times minus x squared, plus four times minus x, plus six. All right, we figure it out. So f of minus x equals minus x to the fifth, plus x to the fourth. That becomes positive, so minus three x squared. That one's negative, minus four x plus six. All right, sign changes. Minus to plus, yep. Plus to minus, yep. Minus to minus, no. Minus to plus, yes. So this means there are three sign changes. So for negative roots, I have three, or less than that by two, one. So I have three negative roots or one negative roots. Now, I have to take my list of roots that I make by doing um, plus or minus six over plus or minus one, list all my possible roots, and then I can start trying them based on my results of Descartes. Sometimes it's, if I have more negative roots, I'm gonna start trying the negatives, or if I have more positives, I'll try try the positives. Another thing to use, graphing calculator, graph the equation, see where it crosses the x-axis. Sometimes it will cross near one of these, which gives you a clue to try one of those for the answer. Good luck. So here's the deal. We used Descartes' rule, and we found out for negative roots, there's a possibility of three and one. For positive roots, we figured out there was a possibility of two and zero. So, based on these odds, Right? I don't want to waste my time doing too much math homework. 
What are you going to try first? Negative roots or positive roots? There are a possibility of five roots in the equation, but there could be no positive. And if that happens, I'm going to waste my time trying positive. So start with the negative ones in this case, because you have to have at least one. You could have three. And if the case is three, you don't have a lot of choices to try before you start getting some roots. And then use your roots and synthetic to depress the equation. Once you get it depressed down to a squared, you can solve it by factoring or quadratic formula, usually. So, so now that you know that you could have three negative or one negative, two positive or no positive, and you think about the nature of the roots for the whole problem, this problem has a possibility of five roots. What could they look like? Well, remember I said that I could have um, three or one for the negative. For the positive, I could have two or zero. And I could have five roots. That means I could have three negative and two positive. There's my five roots. I could have three negative, zero positive, two imaginary roots. That adds up to five. I could have one negative, two positive, two imaginary. Where else can I go with this stuff here? I could have one negative, zero positive, four imaginary. So there's all kinds of situations involved with the roots after you use Descartes' rule. It is helpful. So try to